Okay guys, so I'm gonna break it down here for you. I got my blood work results here. Lab results uh, from being on test, enanthate, at 125 milligrams a week. So this is what we got. Uh, the meat I had was about six weeks ago now, so I've been on 125 milligrams per week since then. One shot a week, done Saturdays. And this is what we've got for the results. Also, my body weight right now is 247 pounds for anyone who is curious about that. So actually, uh, things were pretty dang good here, which I was expecting to be the case. Now, I've been, as far as supplementation outside of the testosterone, I've been taking the Leviathan Nutrition Ire, which is an all-around glucose, lipid panel, health support supplement, all-in-one kind of stuff. Um, from my sponsor. They're obviously one of my sponsors. I linked up with them for this exact reason to have better blood work. So I'm going to do a little plug here. If you're interested in taking that or trying it out, uh, use the code PETE for 10% off on your orders. Uh, they also sell Tudka. So I, I was taking that as well. So I've been taking, even though I'm not on orals, I just continue taking 1200 milligrams of Tudka per day. Uh, I've been taking six capsules of the IRA day because for IRA, you're supposed to take three capsules in the morning, three in the evening. Um, you can also split that into two in the morning, two in the evening, if you want it to last a month. Um, and then I've been taking uh, Hawthorne Berry, I believe 1,500 milligrams a day. Or no, I've been taking 3,000 milligrams a day of Hawthorne Berry for blood pressure control. I don't really know if that one works. I'm just kind of trying that out just because I've heard it helps blood pressure, but I don't know how much that works. So if anybody has any input on Hawthorne Berry, chime in. And then the last thing I'm taking is uh, NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine. And I've been taking 2,000 milligrams of that per day. And NAC is in IRE. I think there's like uh, 750 milligrams of NAC in IRE, but I've been adding in 2,000 milligrams. And NAC is helpful for the liver, and it's an overall antioxidant. So that's all the stuff I've been taking. And I'll tell you at the end of this video what I'm going to be taking instead, what I'm going to do differently. But basically, we got. Um, let me see here. I'm going to start. I got to start with the first page. We'll start with the lipid panel. So total cholesterol 209. Um, typically they want your total cholesterol to be under 200, but that's misleading because HDL, if HDL is really high, it's gonna jack up your total cholesterol. Um, now, I have uh, poor cholesterol runs in my family. Diet, uh, so it, it's not something that's ever been a strong point for me. Um, my diet's not great either, like everybody knows this. My diet is definitely not great, but this is what we got. Triglycerides were 87, and typically they, they up the scale anything over or anything under 150, they say is good, but really you should be under 100. And I've hit 80 before, so 87 is it's decent, it's not you know, it's not too bad at all. HDL good cholesterol was 48, so that's pretty good. Um, highest I've gotten on that is 60 before, so you know, decent, not great in my opinion. 48, a lot of people consider really good, but it's I don't know. I've done 60, I've gotten 60, so whatever. LDL cholesterol 144, so that's a little high. Now on this scale it says it should be below 130. I've seen scales where it should be below 100. So who the heck knows anymore, but they keep changing these numbers around. That said, LDL, my LDL typically stays around 140. It's, it's just, no matter what I do, what changes I make, my LDL is like always 140. I don't know why that is, but it's just a genetic thing. Um, so the ratio of LDL to HDL was three. So my, my LDL was uh, three times higher than L HDL. And they just want that to be under 3.3, so we're good there. Um, like I said, with this, it's, it's not great in my opinion, these lipid panel results, um, but it's not terrible either. I wouldn't even say it's bad, it's just not great. Like LDL could be lower for sure, um, but HDL kind of, counterbalances that a little bit. I, I wish that was a little higher truthfully as well. So there's probably way too much information that you needed to know about your cholesterol, but there you have it. It's something I take very seriously. And I have gotten a calcium score before to see my plaque build up in my arteries. And my calcium score was two, which is excellent. So I had a completely normal heart size, completely normal lung size, no enlargement of my organs at all and almost no plaque buildups whatsoever. Like two is literally nothing. Um, zero is the lowest score you can get and anything under 10 is considered good with that. So everything's in pretty good shape as far as my organs. Now, 
let's go on to the next thing. So this is the uh, TSH, which is one of the main things I want to check because my thyroid has always run pretty substandard. I, I have hypothyroidism in my family. So that's one of the things I've been most concerned about because I've been, had been, I've been at a 4.85 TSH before, which is too high. Typically they say you should be below 4.5, which is ridiculous because really your TSH should be 1.5 to 2.5 at most, or even one to 2.5 at most. So most people out there, you're gonna be at a two or lower TSH. And anything above that, you should really uh, look into that. So like I said, hypothyroidism, underactive thyroid runs in my family. I was very curious about this, as I've always had fatigue issues for the last decade or so. And I've had high, higher TSH levels in the past. So this one was actually pretty good for me. My TSH was 3.55, which for me, the lowest I've ever hit was 3.1. So this wasn't bad at all for me. But he prescribed me some uh, armor desiccated pig thyroid or I think it's desiccated pig liver, which will, it's like a natural form of uh, thyroid med medicine that will help get that TSH down. Um, and it's not as harsh as stuff like Synthroid and Thyroxin and typical uh, thyroid medication. So I got a little, I got the, the one prescription. So this is the only prescription I have right now, but I got put on a prescription for some desiccated pig, uh, actually desiccated pig thyroid. What am I saying? Not desiccated pig liver. Um, so we're gonna try that out see what happens and see if that brings the TSH down because that's one of the main things I'm concerned about now The other thing that was pretty low here was DHEA so DHEA. I don't know a ton about this one actually, but it was 164 and The scale goes from 160 to 449 for normal, but that was less than subpar So he told me I should start taking some DHEA every day as well 50 milligrams and DHEA is very cheap and you can just get that off Amazon or whatever. So I'm gonna be doing that as well. So right now we've added in desiccated pig thyroid for uh, TSH and then DHEA we're gonna supplement as well. And then the last thing I'm gonna add in is I'm gonna add vitamin D3 just cause I got lazy and stopped taking it. Like I, t I take 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 typically, but I ran out of it a few months ago and I just didn't get it again. So my, D my vitamin D level was 27, which is horrendous. Um, the reference range is 30 to 100. And you want to be at the higher end of that for sure. So I need to take 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 again. Very easy fixes here. Those are the three things I'm adding in. We're going to add in vitamin D3, DHEA, and the thyroid stuff. So overall, you know, everything's in pretty good shape, like I said. Um, let's do this one real quick. PSA, which is prostate. I've never gotten this checked. Don't know a lot about this one either, guys. But that was 0 0.540 and it should be below 4.0 so that was excellent apparently like i said i don't know uh a ton about that one but um it's really good basically really good stuff here so then we got uh white blood cell count 7.4 that's good red blood cell count uh 5.39 and then we got hemoglobin, which is 16.8, not too high at all. And then hematocrit is 48.4. So 48, 47, 48 hematocrit is ideal in my opinion. That's pretty good. Um, no problems there with blood pressure or anything. And then hemoglobin is typically about uh, a third of what your hematocrit is. So that wasn't too bad either. I'm pretty happy with those numbers. Blood pressure is gonna be in a good range then too for the most part if those numbers aren't very high then for kidney function actually let's do glucose first so we got 74 for glucose which is uh glucose is your blood sugar levels that's that's really good right there no problems with blood sugar don't have to worry about diabetes or anything like that um, then we got kidney function creatinine 1.13 that's very good scale goes up to 1.3 and typically i'm like 1.25 that's not bad at all. And then the other kidney function people look at is bun, which was 19. Uh, that might be, and that should no, go no higher than 20, but that might be a little elevated from training. Liver enzymes, ALT 56, AST 46. Those are excellent. So, or that's not excellent, I should say. But that's a little elevated, um, but not too bad either. Liver enzymes are very misleading because they go up from training. Any muscular damage or anything inflammation in the body will raise liver enzymes um, so I'm not too worried about that that's good as well I, my liver enzymes never get that high that's not a problem 
And then the last thing we got here, we got the, uh, let's see here, the testosterone. I got to get to that part. So let me pull that sheet out, wherever that is, and we'll break that one down. So here we go. This is the fun part. Uh, testosterone was 1493 total test on 125 milligrams of test. That is way higher than I thought it would be. So that came as a big surprise. I thought it would have to be like, I thought it was going to be like 600 or 700. So I can't use a low test as an excuse or even normal test levels because this is much higher than most natural people. You know, most natural people are going to be like seven, 800 is a good range. Even up to a thousand you could be. But 1493 is not a natural range, so it's my stuff is good stuff if I'm hitting 1493 on 125 milligrams a week, which I swear I am. And I got this blood test, this lab work done 48 hours after my last shot, so my levels were pretty pretty high. If we had done this uh, blood test at like day six, it would have been lower than that, but it's still gonna be an excellent number. SB, SHBG was 13.1, which was low. Um, I don't really know anything about that one to be honest I'm just gonna be straight up so that's something that could use some work and if anyone need, wants to enlighten me on that a little bit that would be good free testosterone was 522 on a scale of 33 to 227 so he actually said that's the highest number he's ever seen which blows my mind because I'm barely on anything right now but that's a heck of a range bioavailable test 1250 and then estradiol 93 e2 now here's the thing with that i haven't been taking an estrogen blocker i don't feel good on them my joints don't feel good um i tend to respond very strongly to estrogen blockers and my estrogen tanks so i've gotten it below 20 before and just feel awful uh so honestly estrogen estrogen i could get to like 50 even 40 40 50 would be ideal but i just don't want to get it too low so i've never been a big fan of estrogen blockers but I guess I could take a little Remedex and bring that down a little bit, um, get that in a good range. But that's pretty much everything, so everything's checking out real good here. There's just some subtle tweaks we could make to dial things in even further and get my body even healthier. But for the most part, it's, it's excellent. I'm not too worried about anything at all. And with uh, adding in the vitamin D3 and um, DHEA and desiccated pig thyroid, that kind of stuff, it should really shore up everything. And I will try a very, very small amount of Remedex once a week and see if we can bring that estrogen down, but I'm not worried about anything. I'm just gonna keep going along here. Um, LDL is something I've tried to bring down in the past. And I think if I eat the way I eat, it's not gonna get much lower than this. So really I would have to make some dietary changes, but it's not horrible either, especially with where the HDL is at. And that's everything from today, so that's, pretty happy with everything and that kind of gives you a breakdown of, uh, of some of these numbers and I'll do some more of these in the future when I get labs done again but that'll probably be we're looking at probably four months when I'll do the next one and I'll probably do that one when I'm on 250 milligrams of test we'll see and we'll go from there but that's everything guys